Um, okay. Um, good evening, church. Uh, before we start, I'd like to thank the Lord for bringing us all together to end his Sabbath. And I'd also like to take the time to welcome you all to the ending of the Sabbath and including those watching on Facebook, I welcome them too. Um, I will, I ask, I invite the Tikatoni family to start us off with a hymn and then I will invite Hilda to open us with a word of prayer. Thank you, Church. Our first song is hymn number six zero. For we know not the hour, like us this uh, all upstanding for our first hymn. Hallelujah, 
Now let us uh, all bow our heads and uh, invite Hilda to offer us a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for today and the gift of life. Please be with us as we are going to end your Sabbath this evening. We ask you to be with the speaker, Uncle Marika, as he shares your word to us. Please bless us with your word, and I pray in your name. Amen. 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 Um, now I invite Marika to lead us with our final sermon. Thank you. Happy Sabbath Church, and uh, thank you, Hilda. Thank you, uh, Jos, for the kind uh, welcome that you've given us uh, this uh, Sabbath evening. And uh, we also want to welcome you guys and uh, our prayers also to, for God to continue to bless you and uh, your family. Uh, before we start today, I would like to take uh, this time to ask for forgiveness. Uh, I know I have uh, wronged people. I know I've done things, I've done uh, stuff that might hurt people. Uh, I've said words or my actions. And uh, I would like to take this time to ask for forgiveness. Uh, Tiko Mbalatana no mbula keno mato wale viseri kimi tanga na kuku ni yada ni lumi ni kalo ni ochisu. Before we start our our end of worship uh, this evening, I would like us to where we sit to bow our head for a word of prayer. Let's pray, Lord, as we sit again on the the last part the last segment of your Sabbath. Lord, is I going to be your mouthpiece today? Lord, speak through me to your people that sits around this Zoom platform today. Lord, I do admit that I'm a sinner. Please forgive us for who we are. As we continue to fellowship with you, please guide us and forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Amen. Okay, our topic this evening is uh, fortresses for God or fortress. What does uh, fortress uh, stand for? If you look at uh, fortress, there's uh, a meaning that comes out first. is a military stronghold especially a strong fortified, fortified town. Okay, when we talk about things so most of the dead will know very well that uh, 
a fort or a fortress okay, is a heavily defended place okay, by military uh, of any such groups. In order to a place to become a fortress, one, the people defending it has to be familiarized, have to be familiar with the territory that they are defending, okay? And two, it has to be well guided. And the last thing, it has to be of great advantage to them, okay? And that makes up the fort itself. Okay, without those three things, it's quite, uh, if you cannot guard, and if you don't know the place well, then might as well uh, look for another place. But the fortress is a place where a very strong hold, okay, we can defend it. And there's another part uh, of the fortress. It says, a person or a thing not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. Okay, so the second part, it says, uh, which I've just read there, okay, it's not in, it's not easily influenced, the person, okay, uh, is not also easily compromised, it doesn't compromise. He guards himself properly also. Okay, this, this is our fortresses. These are the two things I'm gonna be talking about today on our, on our worship, uh, the last segment of uh, God's Sabbath. Let's see what uh, Ephesians 6.10 says. Ephesians 6.10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Paul is, uh, is uh, talking to the Ephesians. And if we see, properly this, uh, this verse, that Paul is like warning the people. Okay, he's giving a warning. He says, finally, my brethren, breathe strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Most of the things that uh, the disciples went through during, uh, once Jesus left them, uh, I think so there's stories in the Bible, there's stories in books about them, the things they went through, okay? Some of the things they went through, they can't do it through human effort, okay? And uh, some of the things they do, uh, these disciples was, uh, was by the help of God himself. And he's, with, through his experience, Paul is trying to tell us to be what? To be strong in the Lord. Okay, and in the power of his might. The big reason why Paul is uh, telling us because he already knew the great controversy that's happening around us in this world. Okay, it's a battle between good and evil. And he realized that by the time the people, us reading this, Okay, the world is going to be at a very, very bad state. So when we come in, now we can see where the world is heading now. Okay, we're sitting here and we're looking at it. Why did uh, Paul wrote that to be strong? In the, to be strong in the Lord and his might. Okay, it's not easy, but we have to, to be strong in the Lord. Why? I've uh, asked uh, this question uh, a couple of times. Why did uh, Paul uh, uh, say this word? Okay, finally, uh, brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his mind. I'd like us to let the Bible answer this uh, question. Revelation uh, verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 12. I'd like Rachel to read it for us, please. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Amen. This is why Paul was is reminding us to be strong in the Lord. Okay? 
John Lorraine later wrote down and he says, those uh, inhabitants of heaven, okay, rejoice because the devil is not there with them, okay? And for us down here, the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, okay, we are very much unlucky. Why? Because the devil is here with us and he's doing everything in his power, okay, to, to tempt, okay, or to, to pull out as many people as he can, not to follow what God wants us to. There were many in Christ day as there are today over whom the control of Satan's for the time seemed broken. Through the grace of God, they were set free from the evil spirits that held dominion over the soul. They rejoice in the love of God. Many sinful people will repent and move to God. Okay, prime example when we were, when Jesus was here, in, uh, when he was doing, uh, when he was living in this world, okay, when he goes out to preach, what happened? People that don't know God, the sinners, they all come to him. Okay, so is on these last days. Okay, um, uh, our lesson uh, today is taken from the Desire of Ages, page 332 uh, to 324. Okay. And there were many Christ uh, followers. Uh, once they heard, once they hear the word of God, they repentfully, and they said, once they've repented, okay, they rejoice in the love of God. Okay, once they witness what the love of God is, okay, they don't want to move back. The control of Satan in their life will be broken and free from the bondage of evil spirits in their life and uh, we should say amen to that because when we come out of sin and we are when we are with christ okay we will rejoice prime example for this is math is in matthew 8 28 to 34 i think so brother applause on our start of Sabbath yesterday, uh, last week, he was telling us about uh, about this story about this uh, demon possessed man. Okay, that's a prime example that that uh, will get, will uh, put us in the right uh, in the right place today. Okay, just uh, just as we look at this uh, demon possessed man. They were possessed with a legions of devil. Legions of devil, okay, probably around from 4,000 to, to 6,000, okay? And they were in chains because how dangerous they were, okay? And this is what Satan does to people, okay? He makes sure, okay, that you are kept in bondage every time. But when we come out of those bondages where Satan leave us in, okay, we rejoice. And uh, you can see a prime example which I put there about the, uh, uh, the story in Matthew 8, 28, 34, when Jesus uh, uh, commanded the devil to come out of these demon possessed men, what happened? Okay, they become the first disciples. Okay, of Jesus Christ. Before the 12 disciples, these, uh, these two men, the demon-possessed men, they were, they were his first disciples. Why? Because they went to 10 cities, okay, witnessing what God has done in their life. Okay, and that's a, a quite a very touching story when people are from that sinful nature to come up and see Jesus, okay, everything changes within the person itself. Okay, kids, I want us to, to have a look at this, okay? Uh, how does the evil spirits operate or how does he work? Okay, Matthew 12, 43, 45, it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places. 
seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than he thought, and they enter and dwell there. So when, uh, so when you live in your life, just say you live a sinful life, okay? You repented, you've gone to, you've gone, uh, to seek uh, God's, uh, God's love, and God has accepted you, and you are with God now, okay? The devil will be what? He will be really sad, okay? He will do everything to get you back so that he can keep in bondage. And this is what he does, okay? He goes back because he knows he can work alone with you. He goes back and he, he'll go and bring another seven wicked, okay, to come back, okay, and tempt you and try to get hold of you. And uh, the last uh, bit, which I've, uh, it's quite uh, uh, very, I would say it's a very sad ending, is when people see God and they go back. And it says there, the last bit of the verse, and it says, and the last state of the man is worse than the first, so shall it also be with the wicked generation. So the state of you being a sinner before will become worse. Why? Because there's seven more, okay? Seven more, more evil than the first uh, evil spirit is there with you, okay? To try pull your, to, to try to tempt you. And that is why going back to our first verse, uh, to our first verse, be strong in the Lord, okay? like the stony ground hears of a parable they did not abide in his love they did not surrender themselves to God daily that Christ might dwell in the heart and when the evil spirits returned with seven other spirits more wicked than himself they were wholly dominated by the power of evil if we are not in the fortress of God that well defended place of God okay we will be dominated by the evil power. Ephesians 6 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. It takes only divine power and divine intervention to fight and become victorious against these evil forces. Kevo kanda na numa menda rawata na ivalu wata na na kevo na hote ni ngono ngono menda toru wata na ndoko kwa enda na tawayana. Vina kati na koko wa melo malangi ni chiko wata kiti na menda rawata kiti. So now we've seen uh, how the devil operates and how he goes about doing his stuff. And we can see that it's really effective the way he works. And that's why in this last day, we should be careful of where we stand, of what to choose. As we talked about before, the great controversy. Let's look at where God stands with this. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. A change is wrought which we can never accomplish for ourselves. When you surrender yourself, a new power possessions. A new power takes possession of a new heart. A change will be seen and that we cannot accomplish in our lifetime. It's quite a very good uh, phrase that uh, we just read there that we, the accomplishment that heaven provides for you once you, once is change your life, 
that accomplishment you will never never achieve in the whole of your lifetime if you're trying to look for it with your own power It is a supernatural. It is a supernatural work bringing a supernatural element into the human nature. The, the soul that is yielded to Christ becomes His own fortress. That sums up our lesson uh, today. Okay, that the soul that is yielded to Christ becomes His own fortress. You will only become His fortress. You can only become fortresses of God if your heart is fully yielded to him, which he holds in revolted war, and he intends no authority shall be known in it but his own. The soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress. The A soul thus kept in possessions by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assault of Satan. Okay, that phrase speaks for itself. Okay, ni sa sorwa kinambula sa soli ni sa la liuta kikanda loma la ni na na nandambula en renre wana tiapo ron basuka na ilatia. Okay, Satan is useless once our heart, okay, once our life is taken over by God, or when we are in this fortress which God has built for us. Second Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what happens when Jesus, God takes over our life. Okay, everything becomes new compared to what Satan does to us. Okay, he puts us in bondage. Okay, he left us on that dark corner okay, so that you cannot jump out of it. And, but when Jesus gets hold of you, okay, he changes everything. That's why the phrase, uh, the second one, it says, uh, sorry, the first uh, paragraph, it says, change rod can never accomplish for ourselves. During our own, our whole lifetime, we'll never accomplish that. And it only takes seven Okay, to renew that heart. But unless we do yield ourselves to the control of Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. We must inevitably be the under control of the one or the other or the two great powers that are attending for the supremacy of the world. It is not necessary for us deliberately to choose the service for the kingdom of darkness in order to come under his domination. In this world, we can only be, be controlled by one of the two powers, okay? The evil or the good. You cannot choose both. Thing that reminds me is, uh, is um, Miri who was taking a, who was uh, teaching us every morning, Revelation three fourteen, Revelation chapter three, uh, verse fourteen to twenty five about the Laodicean church. Okay, sometimes you become more, uh, cold and sometimes you become warm. Okay, not do that. Okay, you got to choose which one, which side. But unless we submit ourselves fully to be in the control of Jesus Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. Remember, we can only choose one side. And it's, I know it's really, really obvious which side to choose. We have, we have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of light. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possessions of the heart and will make it 
his abiding place. If we do not align ourselves with God or cooperate with the heaven agencies, okay, Satan will take control of your soul, will take possessions of your heart and make you work and make you his workplace and make you his slave also. It's quite a hard uh, reality, but it's happening right now. Okay, when you're in the wrong place, when you're not in the fortress of God, okay, you are in Satan's area or you are in Satan's uh, fortress. And as we learned before, okay, as we've talked about before, okay, what he did to those, uh, to those two men, okay, and that's what Satan does, okay, he lives in bondage, okay, of this world, he will make you uh, uh, be committed to the things that that heaven doesn't want you to commit your life in. The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart, faith in His righteousness. Okay, when we when you have time, you can read Romans four. Uh, wonderful. The only defense against evil is the accepting of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Kalani mdona vosa levu chingo mdona tiki nambimbi evolating in dwelling Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. And that is the only defense we can have. To have faith in his righteousness. Righteousness Nicolosi in Dotal Naluvena Tundana. When Bula Takanambula Tavala Naburu. And he's laid out, Jesus laid out a way for us to live. And when heaven looks down, he looks out, he looks for that place. I remember Tamayep uh, was uh, saying that today. Okay. When God looks down, he looks down at his word. He looks down at his promises that he has given us. Okay. If he says that he's going to protect his people. Okay. Why are we still around? Why are we still fiddling around and not in the fortress where God wants us to be? If we do not align ourselves with God. Okay. We will become Satan's agent. Uh, Romans 4, I'll just read the third, the third verse. It says, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him for righteousness. As I was saying before that uh, Jesus left out a way for us to follow. And when God looks down, he looks out at this way that we have to abide by that way. That we have to Look for that way to live our life with, to live our life in. Okay. And if we sit aside and just look at, oh yeah, that's how Jesus should live. Okay. Because faith, it's saying that faith is what? We always say the faith is doing it. Okay. Not just a matter of speaking it or or just looking at it, but it's doing it. Okay, God has left us, uh, Jesus left us a way for us to follow it, and we should follow it. And by then, faith comes into play because we are following, because we are doing it. And uh, I like the verse, uh, the verse three of Romans four. Uh, Romans four three it says, "For what does the scripture say? Is Abraham believed God?" and it was accounted for him for righteousness, okay? Abraham believed God just because he believed, okay? He was accounted him for his righteousness, okay? And that brings the, uh, our, our lesson today uh, to life that uh, yes, God accepts people Okay, when they work their faith, 
uh, in his righteousness. John 10.10, 10, famous verse. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that he may have it more abundantly. We can see two pictures here, okay? About the great controversy, about the two powers that are fighting the uh, great controversy. Okay, the devil, which is the thief there, he comes and he steals and he kills and destroys. But when we look at God, okay, which he says, I, he said he has come, okay, to have life. He have come that you may have life and more abundantly. Tali na lomani kalubikan na. Ningunan na tundun kina. Na kalu ni rai sumbuma na rai tango pa na kono ang nandur kina. Kono nandur kina na kami kuwa. Ewa tau sar ngan nanda sa tiko buda talo nanda sa rai. Sa wala ka nang una. Belis mikin nanti kondo. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus reminds us about our vital connections that we so dearly need. In order to be strong and able to overcome evil forces in this world, we've seen how strong these evil forces is. But Jesus is trying to remind us here, okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And for us to go to his father, remember what is Jesus doing right now? He is our mediator up in heaven. And for us to go to God, we must go through Jesus. Okay? And no one comes to that. And that's why that connection between us Okay, and heaven has to be established well in us, in our family, in our church. Unless we become vitally connected with God, we can never resist the unhallowed effects of self-love, self-indulgence and temptation to sin. Guys, uh, this, uh, this phrase is quite, uh, and I think so it touches, uh, and uh, I think I applied it to myself also, okay? Sometimes we see the things and we see the world and we love the things in the world more than what heaven is providing for us, okay? If we are not vitally connected to God, we will have more love to the world than to God himself. 1 John 2.15. Uh, Rachel, can you read that, please? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in him. When you love the world more, okay, the love of the Father is not in you. Oh, it's quite a very... Uh, a true statement, okay? And we, here, we should use it as a mirror to us. Uh, I'll take an example about uh, Rachel. Rachel always give a, uh, if you don't know, Rachel has got a pet, Charlie. And uh, Charlie's a black dog that uh, runs around the house. I usually give money to Rachel to go to the shop. And uh, what Rachel's mom used to do is ask Rachel, when he gives her money to go and spend it or keep it or whatever. The mom usually asks Rachel, Rachel, uh, what did you spend your money in? Oh, I spend it, I spend it on this, I spend it on that, and uh, I spend uh, this, I bought Charlie stuff also. So he's bought stuff for him and stuff for Charlie. And when the mom asked him, you kept your tithe and your offerings aside, Rachel didn't answer because she knows she, she, she didn't do it. OK, 
okay? And always reminder about what we're talking about today, about the love, okay, of the worldly things, about the love of the things that are here in this world, which are destructible. And we should be careful, okay, ask ourselves, what do we love more in this world? We may live for many bad habits for the time. We may part company with Satan, but without a vital connection with God through the surrender of ourselves to him, moment by moment, we shall be overcome. God wants us to reconnect with us moment by moment strengthens us spiritually and if we don't we are giving the devils every opportunity to bring us out of god's fortress create that connection with god without a personal acquaintance with with christ and a continual communion we are the mercy of the enemy and shall do his bidding in the end Create that connection now with God when we still have the time. It's important that we have that connection. If we in that fortress of God, or if we are fortresses of God, meaning that we we do submit fully to Him, okay, then that creation, uh, sorry, that uh, connection between us and God has to be strengthened. Choose God or choose life. I'll sum up now. The desire of ages, uh, it says the most common manifestations of the sin against the Holy Spirit is persistently slighting heaven's invitation to repent. Every step in the rejection of Christ is step towards the rejection of salvation. God is inviting us in his fortress where he wants us, he wants to keep us safe there. He's well defended by him. Okay. And remember the last bit is quite hurtful. It says every step in the rejection of Christ is a step towards the rejection of salvation. We don't want to reject salvation. We want salvation. Okay. And we have to move closer now to that place where God has laid out for us to follow. Heaven knocks on your door every day. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. Close, I'll be round up. Si no puedo nada ver si dumo angara tiquina, no hago nada cosa bien acá tan acá lo me sale más ruido no me toma nada, no sean vivos también, ya también lo da cabo con no no vistan como aquí no lo que tiene no, uno nada ve con tiquina y con dignidad, uno nada anda en dignidad, me dice que tiene no lo que tiene no Revelation 22, 11, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be, be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. This is the close of probation. Si tu we kenda na ngalala menda njinye ki na menda toso wana kalou na nona loma ni mbaita wana kalou, to toso. Sindu tal na lutu, na gulu ronga maru rege na kama, nandi ni kalou me baka na lutu. To end it, uh, to my uh, to my fever was uh, to my fever was telling us uh, about uh, uh, was telling us uh, the difference of how to to make, uh, to be a, to be a good uh, evangelist. 
Okay, and I've uh, and I've worked out that uh, after answering those thirty six questions that Tamay Fiva gave, and I said, "Wow, I didn't even realize that that uh, I'm a testimonial uh, evangelist that I I should be like uh, to go out." and testify things that God has done in my life. And I would like to testify uh, to close our Sabbath today. Uh, six, seven years of my life, I was, in, I was not in the right place. I was in a bad, bad place. Everything I do is like I've been to places where I shouldn't be at done things that I'm, I'm not supposed to do, okay? And uh, I was so career orientated. I've been, I would live, I would choose work over the family. In this month, I'll probably be in uh, South America. In this month, I'll be somewhere in Asia. I was doing all those kind of things. And uh, I think I was doing the right thing. And until I shattered my knee in two places, while I was in the jungle in uh, Brunei, I shattered my knees in two places. And uh, coming in, coming back from uh, that, the consequences of that, I have to go through a big surgery. So. After having that injury, I got a phone call uh, from a doctor and he says, yeah, we want you to come in tomorrow and we'll uh, do a knee surgery. So come the time I went in, they do all the surgery, they remove parts of the bodies and they put it inside the knees and all that. And uh, come back and he said, yeah, you're good now. Just a week after that surgery, I got another phone call from the doctor. Hey. Uh, we need to do another surgery. I say, what? And he said, yeah, you have to come in tomorrow to do another surgery. So in three weeks, I have to do two, surger two surgeries, yeah? but both on a different part. So now they said that they have to open uh, uh, my shoulder now. So in three weeks, two surgeries, and I was lying there and I said, right, this is me, I don't, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I was in a very, very bad place. And the first thing that uh, happens to me, I didn't know that uh, there's only, while I was in that place, uh, can I, Rachel knows it. Uh, two phone call comes in and he said, hey, can I come for a visit? One for the Kivezol boys, and the Kela Vikandana Zurimburi, na Vilomani to Imburi, Lele in the Vilomani, Talibavi, Tedin, the Vilomani, the Kunimburi. So they come in and they visit me, and Lakutumana Vital Nom Latana Kai Kurwuli Malavsuit. And before they came in, there was a vista that came in before them. I don't know how he hears it. I don't know how he said, how he, he ends up in my house that day. And that day, I'd like to say, I think so, he's right here, Tamay Sila. Tamay Sila walked into my house that day and he said, two things he said. He said, Tamay Rachel, Go on, non revisuri, non ra, non rovita la in illurio. And the other one was, he's there, me mata te kirna lin lut. Me uni in dona ona mogwa vina te kiro kin na illurio wat ke kemin na lin lut. Wat ke tamaisila. 
lowest, lowest part of my life, he came up with me. He didn't say to come back. He didn't say anything else. But what he did that day was to remind me to go back to his fortress. May God continue to bless us in this new week. Amen. Um, thank you, Uncle Mareka, for that uh, testimony, and we thank you for your uh, sermon. And I just like to take the time to thank the Lord as well, as I not really, I don't really understand Fijian, but um, the way he was pouring his heart out to God and to friends and family just shows that we are stronger as one with God as well. So that's what I would like to say. And I, I thank God for that as well. Um, anyway, uh, I invite the Tikutani to lead us to the end of Sabbath with a hymn. And I invite Uncle Mika to close us with a word of prayer afterwards. Thank you. Okay, our last song is uh, Psalms 184, Jesus Paid It All. We invite everyone to stand.
I'd love to bring some stay. Church, I would like to ask for a favor from everyone, uh, especially you kids. Before I, I say the last prayer, I would give one minute for everyone, especially you kids, I'm looking at all of you kids, to say a prayer for these two sisters. Um, uh, Keresi and uh, Amelia. I want you guys to say a prayer for one minute for them. And uh, once that one minute, then I'll close, uh, close it with a word of prayer. Let's bow our head and pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for reminding us of where our life stands. We know that uh, time is short. We know that you are rounding up your people in these last days. Where the world is heading and where we are heading, we'd like to ask you, this evening to please guide our life. Bring us back to your fortress where we can be safe and comfort. Lord, this evening we pray for the two sisters, uh, Teresa and Amelia. A car accident they were in. Lord, you are the doctors of this world. 
please visit them this afternoon. Visit them this evening. Touch their bodies, Lord, and touch their mind also. Heal the wound from their bodies. Lord, as we sit here and uh, we ask you to please be with us as the new week starts. We ask you to please uh, guide us in the place where we want to be. We pray for the families that are not here with us, uh, the commitment. We pray for other families who've got uh, other problems that we don't know about. We ask you to please meet them this afternoon. Uh, be with us as we go through the new week and uh, continue to be on our side. We ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 One of them. I think I'm coming back from school. Oh, my God. Can I read the Lord of God?